is it that's so special about Ivy Green? I think for us, you know, she's a mixture of old and new, of traditional and high tech. You know, she's a gaff rig, um, but the topsail yard is carbon fibre. Um, she was designed for a couple to sail, which is what we want to do. We've raced with bigger crews, I've done single handed sailing. Um, you know, what's fun is not to have to worry about how many crew you've got. You just come down, get on board, and you can go for a sail. And she looks like a lot of work. Um, and, yeah, the varnish is a lot of work, but I don't do that myself. <laughs> um, you know, we've got a lot of string. It's all brown. Uh, but once you've learned what it is and what should go where, then she's really very easy to sail. And she's been well thought out. Um, Ed Burnett, who designed her, was really was the top of the game. Um, for these types of boats and so everything works and we can see that in we're now halfway through our second season on the boat and you know, the, the niggles that, that cause trouble are there's a squeak in the main sheet where it rubs on the tiller and the self-draining cockpit fills up with water if you go too fast they're pretty minor things for a boat this complicated Ivy Green was built here at the Elephant Boatyard in about 2000-2001. She's a strip plank wood epoxy boat. She was here, in fact, the, the boatyard had a fairly major fire at the time, so essentially she had to be in, uh, rebuilt. Mm. She finished in 2003. So briefly on the Solent, the OGA here, where she distinguished herself before uh, heading out to the East Coast, and she then spent uh, a little over a decade in West Mersey uh, in Essex. We found her in 2014 and brought her back. Brought her back here in October. There's a lot of boat. There's quite a lot of sail. You don't have to use it all the time. Um, she's relaxed and easy to sail. Um, you know, putting up the mainsail. Yeah, it's a big sail, but the two halyards run together. It's not a huge amount of effort. You don't have to get everything bar tight as you would on a modern boat. You know, we chuck the sails up and we'll go for a sail. Um, yeah, if you compare it to you know, people dropping their mainsail straight into the stack packs, then it's a bit more work. Um, but if you compare it to, I don't know, cruising boats even from probably 20 years ago, if she really isn't. Uh, and she's a delight to sail and there's something to talk about with anybody we meet. Um, it's just great fun. And of course the Gappers is a great little social community, isn't it? It is, yes, and we're doing more and more with, with them. We were over in Bembridge um, for a weekend uh, a couple of weeks ago, and there's a big event in Yarmouth that was back in May, and we were there. Uh, you know, that gets nearly 100 Gaffers in there, from 16-foot um, little boats to... Uh, we had uh, a Brixham trawler in the harbour, so all, all shapes and sizes. And that's a fun mixture of, you know, there are people who just want to go and sit on, the, sit on their boats in the harbour and talk about boats, and the other half of the fleet go out and try and race. Of course, racing off Yarmouth on the ebb tide with no wind is uh, more, it was also entertaining. <laughs> we did a lot of anchoring. <laughs> and you're very lucky, of course, that you've got excellent crew. I do, yes. It's very much a, a joint effort, both uh, owning and sailing this boat. Uh, and Louise does all the work on the front half of the boat, and I sit at the back and steer and shout helpful instructions.
first started sailing the boat, Richard was on the helm and my job was doing the foredeck, which included the bowsprit. So I realised initially it's, it's a 14 foot piece of wood, very solid, and um, so my job was to get the bowsprit out. And it's quite heavy, so initially I had to push it out and had to actually stand on it in order to, and this is bearing in mind it's sticking out quite far, it sticks out 10 foot at the end of the boat, so I had to stand on it in order to push it down in order to get the pin in, so that was actually very difficult. <laughs> so I actually had quite a lot of practicing with that, even you know in the harbour we were practicing with it because the very thought of doing that when we're out at sea, um, we thought well we really don't want to do that at all so I really wanted to get quite used to doing it so we'd had lots of practices getting the bowsprit out uh, and then obviously getting it back in again because you've got to take the pin out and then pull the bowsprit back in again and it's just a very heavy big piece of wood. Uh, we did lose the bowsprit at one point which was an interesting <laughs> um, <laughs> so when we were we were just coming actually near Yarmouth and um, we took the um, strap, what are they called? The straps off. Oh, the hyphen levers. The le we took the levers off and the pin had actually come out at the time. Uh, hit it, but with the jiggling around, the pin had come out and the bowsprit just disappeared completely, which was, <laughs> and it was sudden panic. It was like, oh my God, the bowsprit's gone. <laughs> so Richard, came up immediately to, yeah, to, to basically we had to pull it back on board and so on because, I mean, it had just gone and just literally come off. So that was a bit of uh, excitement. <laughs> so when Richard is uh, doing something up on the foredeck, then I sometimes take over on the helm and I have my little chair here, a little seat that sits on the edge of the cockpit uh, that just allows me to have... Um, a place to sit and then, and then I can actually have the tiller extension on the helm so that's my little job is when I'm on the helm so I have these two bits of uh, equipment that help me on my job on the helm. <laughs> you certainly go to a lot you go to a lot of effort to, to make sure everything looks immaculate. Well we do we like the boat to look lovely she's a beautiful boat and I think it's worth the effort to make her look nice and yeah we do like to yeah make her look pristine and um, yeah, it's and then obviously trying to tidy up the boat, the, the the ropes and so on, so that you don't trip over them. That's really important on a boat as well. So everybody always tries to to make it look tidy and um, yeah, we don't want any accidents. So that's important. Mm. There is quite a bit of work getting it all, get, getting all the sails up, and then tidying up all the ropes, which is actually quite a bit of work because they're quite long. You know, all the all the there's a lot of rope to, to tidy up and so on and they're quite heavy big ropes as well so that does take quite a bit of effort but once it's all done and looking pristine then you can relax and enjoy the scenery. I think we work quite well as a team with Richard on the helm and me doing the fore deck and um, we yes just generally work very well together don't we I think yeah. so. And we each have our own little jobs so uh, and we know what those are so that's that works quite well.